Lord knows we've definitely used this thing a lot. Hey, this is what we've done. Help. It's hard to find locally, surprising. Um, she's been doing really great thus far. Hey guys. I want to do something a little bit different this week than a week in the life because I feel like it's kind of repetitive. Nothing changes, plus it's rainy, so we're not really doing anything. A lot of people are getting new baby animals, baby goats, um, bottle sheep, bottle cows. So I kind of wanted to show you what we've had in our vet kit. Lord knows we've definitely used this thing a lot. Um, first thing I would do is make up a health record for each one of your animals just because I mean, if you have one or two, you usually can remember what went wrong with which one and what you did, but the lines kind of blur when there's a lot. So I have these, I'll list a link to where you can download and print them. Um, there's a spot for their name, date of birth, farm name, species, contact information, parents, and then obviously medication and date. And I left a spot to where you can list why you gave that. That's super helpful, not only if you can't remember if an animal has been treated for something, but two, if something goes wrong with an animal and you treated it and it was successful or not successful, you can see what it was, or you can take it into your vet and be like, hey, this is what we've done, help. So that's the first thing I definitely recommend doing. Next is stocking up. So we just keep everything in this nice little tote. We have extra needles and syringes kept in a bathroom drawer, so I'm not gonna show you those, but if you go to Premier One, vet supplies. They have everything super cheap um, or obviously you can go to tractor supply. It's going to be a little more expensive but they do have pretty much everything you're going to need. First off, bottle calves. A lot of people are getting bottle calves. My first bottle calf was last summer. We've had two. My husband Trent, he's obviously had a lot more because they've raised cows his entire life. I've never raised cows so it was kind of a learning experience for me. Main thing we had issues with was scours. I think pretty much any bottle animal you're going to have that problem, but with calves, we use this. You can get it at Tractor Supply. The dosing on this, it is listed on the bottle itself. What we did with our calves was split them in half. So you see how large that pill is. We'd split them in half, one in the morning, one in the evening. Um, and typically we do that for three or four days and see how the scours clear up. But this was a lifesaver. So if you're getting a bottle calf, I definitely recommend getting some of these. Liquamycin is just a preventative antibiotic. Whenever we first got both of our calves, we gave them each a shot of this just to kind of clear up anything that might be going on. Again, tractor supply, it was like 25 bucks. It doesn't hurt to keep it on hand. So that's it as far as cows go. Um, some of the goat and sheep stuff can cross over to cows. We haven't used it for that yet, so I won't talk about it too much. What you'll definitely want to stock up on is stomach tubes, especially if you're doing a lot of smaller animals, bottle animals. Again, Premier One Vet Supplies, they have these, I think they're like $1.50 a piece, but they'll come in handy whenever you've got an animal down, it won't eat. Hard to find locally, surprisingly. So yeah, get you some of those. Syringes, again, Tractor Supply, Premier One, that had some water in it, get those. You have several choices on needles. I did not put any of those in here. I'm gonna guess this is like a 26 gauge. It's very small, so it doesn't hurt near as bad. So I bought a bunch of those from the vet. And then tiny syringes. I don't care for these syringes too much because they can only hold up to one mil. So most antibiotics and medications you're giving lambs, that's perfect, but anything larger, you're gonna need one of these bigger syringes and bigger needles. Most people for cattle, they use like a 18 gauge. I just like these smaller ones just because they don't hurt near as bad, especially on smaller animals. A bigger animal, yeah, you do need that bigger gauge. A little less scary, some pastes. So goats and sheep, they can get low on selenium, vitamin E, um, floppy kid syndrome, uh, white muscle disease, things like that can come from being low on selenium. So. We keep that on hand, so if we see one kind of acting a little funny or weak or showing signs of any of those diseases, pop some in. Um, or any time that they kind of act mopey, I give them a little bit of this probiotic paste. So if an animal's not eating a whole lot, usually I'll give them a squirt of this. 
in combination with this. Um, those two will kind of help repair the gut, repair the gut, repair the rumen, and help them get back to eating. Vitamin B complex gel, preventative thing. Um, animal starts acting sick or mopey or weak, give them this. Sheep and goats are really prone to running low on vitamin B and theamine. Both of those theamines are really important for them. So if they start getting low on that, it can cause several different problems. And usually it starts out by just acting mopey and weak. So we give them a shot of that and hope it doesn't get worse. Um, so these three things definitely go and purchase if you have goats or sheep so you have them on hand. Lastly on the paste is last stand. Now this is something that was manufactured mostly for cattle. It's not labeled for other animals. Ask your vet before you give it to them. But it basically has a lot of vitamins and a lot of sugar in it. So if an animal starts going down, they're getting weak. Um, they're pretty much on their last leg. That's why it's called last stand. Give them some of this. With sheep and goats, it doesn't take much. Usually cows, you give the whole tube. But keep that on hand in case of emergency. Usually it'll get them back up bouncing around long enough for a vet to come out and see them or long enough for you to get them to a vet. So I think that runs about $13. It's worth it if you're trying to save an animal. This, you can get it for cattle, goats, sheep, even chickens actually, Nutri-Drench. I use this whenever they're coming back or if they're going through a weak spell, um, a spell of not eating a whole lot, coming back from an illness, um, have scours, anything like that. This will help out with getting a lot of nutrients into their system without overloading them with grain. Because if something's not eating, it's not going to eat. You need to give it some kind of nutrient. Whenever this is in one of these, it's hard to get this to go back in their throat far enough. So I cut the end of a stomach tube off because it doesn't need to go all the way to their stomach. Usually they'll still swallow it. Just pop that out on. And it'll extend for far enough back into the throat so that whenever you push it down, it'll go in the throat instead of them spitting it all over you because that's happened several times. Most everybody's going to have this in their house with some Pepto-Bismol. It's basically used to treat the same things it would in a human. Bloating, gassiness, discomfort, any kind of stomach problem. I give them this. It coats the lining in their stomach and just kind of helps them through it. I also have it in a tablet form because some goats... And sheep will not swallow that no matter what you do but they'll eat these like candy so little tabs same thing for gas x they don't like this one i guess it's because it's mint this is actually the first thing we purchased is vitamin b complex and theamin in injectable form you can see that um again tractor supply we had a sheep that actually had the beginning stages of polio and this was our key in saving that little thing if you see one going down and you don't have time to wait for this to take effect to go through the body, be absorbed by the bloodstream, you can inject this into the muscle and it'll go straight to their body within like 10 minutes. So highly recommend keeping that on hand. Bloat treatment. This is for frothy bloat only. So typically frothy bloat, the main difference that you'll notice is they kind of drool a little bit more from their mouth than any other form of bloat. So Keeping that on hand, it didn't really work for us. Um, both cases that we had, I think only one case was frothy bloat. I mean, it doesn't hurt to have it. Last thing as far as an actual medication is Batril 100. So this is what the vet gave us when we started having sheep go down at the drop of a hat for no reason. Um, this will treat, this is one of the strongest antibiotics you can get on the market. Um, we just give it IM, so intramuscular. You can give it sub-Q, just under the skin, but if you're wanting fast effects, IM. This little bottle cost us $100, but there's like, for lambs anyway, there was over 900 doses, so well worth the money. Um, you do have to have a prescription for it, but I suggest getting it. Uh, probiotic powder, we kept getting issues with bloating, we've gotten this, this probiotic powder. And we would just mix that in every bottle for the instructions once a day. And that really seemed to help keep the bloating down. Because <clears throat> the problem with pneumonia is whenever the lungs get so inflamed, they press on a nerve in between their lungs, which tells their body to quit processing food. So the healthier the gut, the better it is 
to help prevent the pneumonia to getting to that point, if that makes sense. That's how our vet described it. I don't know, contact your vet if you have questions. <laughs> Corid, this is for treatment and prevention of coccidiosis, which I've made a blog about it. I've talked about it a little bit. Um, there's several ways that you can do it. If we notice somebody that has a dirty, messy back end, obviously you can get fecal examinations and see exactly what it is, but a lot of times that'll take four to five days to get results on. So you don't really have time to wait around and say, hey, yeah, we need to treat it with this. It's not gonna hurt anything to give them this. Um, it is recommended to give um, sheep and goats theamine, so vitamin B complex, if you're doing this, because this will stop the production of it and they need this. So cord V, good to have on hand for cows, goats, sheep, any kind of ruminating animal. Um, this bottle costs about 40 bucks, I believe, at Tractor Supply. So we keep it on again, give them a little shot of it. Worming, deworming, I should say. There's a thousand different things on the market. Talk to somebody that's done it before, talk to your vet, see what they think is best, have some fecal examinations done so that you know what you're treating, make sure that you're treating for the right thing and not just squirting medicine down their body that they don't need. And obviously it's gonna cost you. So the first thing we got was the safeguard. It didn't really seem to do anything. Um, Trent's uncle actually has raised goats his entire life and he agrees that it's basically like giving them a shot of water. Some people have had great luck with safeguards. Safeguard worked amazing for my horse but for the goats, it didn't really seem to work. So we do have a bottle of it, but try it, see what you think. So with that, he had us switch over to Valbazin. We've used it once. We haven't given it to our goats yet. We gave it to our sheep, any kind of ruminating animal, that's what it's for. And that is what he recommended and said has worked best for him. And he's had some amazing goats. They've done great things in 4-H. So I definitely trust his word. <laughs> And lastly, aspirin. I haven't really used this much. Um, this is actually for horse, that's why it says horse care. But we've had a couple of them get like bumps and knocked around and things like that. Just helps bring that swelling down a little bit. That is our vet box. Um, so yeah, wide range of stuff and there's a thousand other uses for it. I'm sure we might even be using it wrong. Like I said, contact your vet because I only know from experience. But I'll list the link to Premier One in the description below so you can check it out. And then also I'll list that GOAT emergency vet group on Facebook again. Just because, like I said, I know a lot of you are getting into goats and bottle goats. And they're amazing. They're I'm not sure if they're actually licensed vets. I don't think that they are. There might be some people that participate in the group that are and will definitely give you good advice, but it's people that's just been doing this and has been in the in the game for so long. So it's, it's definitely saved us quite a few things. And it's great just to go through and read their posts and read other issues people are coming across and kind of learning so that whenever it happens to you, if it happens to you, you know what to do and you can jump in and help. But um, yeah, that is our vet box so far. If you have any questions or comments or want to tell me what I'm doing wrong, by all means, leave me a comment. But don't forget to click subscribe, click notifications, because you never know when I'm going to post and I'm probably not going to tell you about it. But um, yeah, thanks for watching.